and welcome to Preparing for the Unexpected. We are live from DRJ Spring 2024 here in Orlando, Florida at the Renaissance. Is it on sea, at sea, sea World or? Renaissance Orlando Sea World? Sea World. Is the official name. That's the official name. I always get it mixed up. But that's great. It's great to be back here. And of course, you already heard, I'm here with my co host, James Green. James, welcome back. Hey, Alex, we are here again. Again, we've been yes. doing another live broadcast with our partners at Voice America. We are so excited to do this again. We wanted to let everyone know that this hour of the broadcast is brought to you by Speak and Spark. Speak and Spark is the speakers bureau marketplace that connects event organizers and speakers in resilience, cybersecurity, and human resources. Their mission is to connect audiences and experts, which sparks a conversation. And thank you to Speak and Spark for sponsoring uh, this hour. And uh, you, we mentioned Voice America, so we should do a shout out to Aaron, who now can't say anything. We can say whatever we want now. Yes, Aaron is we know in he's the, listening. the background. Aaron can <laughs> shut off all our equipment. Yes. And he can send us nasty messages in chat, but he cannot say anything on the air, <laughs> which I'm disappointed about. He's probably laughing right now. I'm, I get a message. Yeah, here we go. He can push stop recording. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, why don't we take the audience through today's day two of DRJ Spring. So let's talk about day one and what happened at the welcome reception last night. Well, last night we played PowerPoint Roulette. Yes, we did. Which was rather interesting. There were quite some uh, interesting uh, uh, things happening and got some good laughs. Uh, and... My explanation is probably wrong, but people would choose a topic and we would show them 10, it was 10 slides, right? Correct. 10 various slides of anything at random and they have to talk about that topic based on what was showing up on the slides. And some of them were rather really take you off topic. Absolutely. So they didn't see the slides ahead of time and they could not skip any of the slides. And uh, the slides were all different types of silly images. I uh, really forced people to think on their feet and also where some people got tripped up, they only had four minutes. Mm. And so some people did not get all the way to the 10th slide. One of our guests later today, I think would have won, but did not get to slide 10. So they got disqualified. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, and we'll talk about that more, but it was, it was a lot of fun. It was great to see how people think on their feet, how they respond to visual imagery and unexpected imagery, a very noisy crowd. We actually broadcast some of it live on the Preparing for the Unexpected YouTube channel Yes. last night. I don't know if you could hear anything. It was very <laughs> loud in here. We were very excited about that, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, and we thought it, it fit in with the theme of risk and resilience to see what people's risk appetite was. The people who picked what seemed like a safe category actually tended to have the harder slides and the yeah. harder categories had the easier slides. We did that by design. Just kind of curious what people would do. Would they play? Uh, there were several people who rooted from the background but didn't want to be in the spotlight and we totally respect that. Uh, saying that while we broadcast live to the world without being in the background. Uh, but it was, a, it was a good time. Uh, first time in this hotel yes. for this conference. Love, love this hotel so far. The staff's been fantastic. Lots of space, lots of room. Restaurants are good. And this is shaping up. I believe uh, DRJ Spring will be the largest attended conference in the world in our space. Uh, last count I had was well north of 600 people. So there's a lot of people here. And the biggest surprise for me, Alex, I know that it's called the Renaissance uh, Hotel and Resort Orlando SeaWorld. As you and I have been at some of the Disney properties where they put the word Disney on it, but maybe Disney World is 40 minutes away mm -hmm. uh, by Crow. Here, SeaWorld is literally across the street. I was yes. parked in my car, and you, like 50 feet away is a roller coaster for SeaWorld. So it is right there. And it makes me wonder, can we broadcast from SeaWorld tomorrow? Will Voice America and SeaWorld let us move move locations? Uh, I think Aaron and the team would let us change locations if we invite them. 
<laughs> we have, uh, we have uh, a portable equipment while we're on a roller coaster. Now that would be interesting. So you know you have you have all these different talk shows now where there's like hot wings, where the gentlemen interview someone while they eat ten different types of hot wings, and you have driving in cars with various talk show hosts. We could maybe break a world record where we will interview people while we're on a roller coaster. Yeah. I, I think we might have to have uh, the mics on mute for that one at times. <laughs> I also love yes. the imagery there because we're five minutes in and I've already gone off the rails from our script. So I think it's a good, oh, that's fine. A good we... alliteration. But, you know, we did, we want to thank Bob Arnold and the team at Disaster Recovery Journal for being our partner uh, in this. Again, we are broadcasting live from the exhibit hall. Yep. We don't Dude. have as good of a view of the lunch lines and the tables like we normally do, but we can still kind of see them. But we've got uh, a lot of great vendors that we can see, and we will be on the hunt, as always, for the best swag that we can find. Yeah, we still have to find that. But if it's like any other conference, we'll also be smelling the uh, the food and we'll be sitting here salivating, yeah, you know, well, wishing we could have some of it. <laughs> So, Alex, why don't you share with the audience uh, this morning what happened this morning? Because actually nothing happened this morning, which is a happening for us. Oh, yeah. Well, first, I just wanted to uh, backtrack on a couple of things. Of course. The, uh, Aaron, our sound engineer over at Voice America, said um, if you buy him a Shamu hat, uh, he'll be here. That's all it takes. So that, apparently, that's all it takes. I will have one so by tomorrow. We'll, we'll get one. We'll see if we can get one. <laughs> And the other thing um, is, yeah, this morning uh, we actually set up with no issues, which if you've ever heard some of the other live broadcasts is a first for us. <laughs> we always have something go wrong <laughs> and so not something small. It's always something big. Something exactly. doesn't connect. Something so I'm, doesn't I'm starting work. to know more about you. So last night we decided that we would meet at 930. And I knew what that meant in Alex time. So I headed down <laughs> at 8.55 this morning. Uh, and of course, you were already here. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't send you a text because uh, my provider in Canada uh, obviously had an issue. So no texts were going through. Uh, so I just, ah, well, he'll be down here soon enough. It'll yeah, be fine. Should, and then I turned around and there you were. <laughs> we should actually look that up if there's been another outage in Canada. Uh, because everyone I know from Canada could not communicate with anyone back in Canada. Yeah, uh, I couldn't uh, reach uh, family who's looking after my dog. He was uh, not responding, and I, was, I showed you all the error messages I was getting, so there probably was some sort of an outage. I'm going to look it up right now. While we're looking that up, uh, yeah, so we got here at 9.30. Everything was all done, and then we didn't know what to do. We were like men of leisure. Yeah, we sat here, we got to test with Aaron ahead of time, everything worked, uh, which was probably a surprise for him too, <laughs> that everything worked the first start, first try, and uh, we sat here waiting for the uh, clock to roll up to 11 a.m. I also want to mention about the uh, roulette game last night too. I thought it was rather interesting that we're always talking about crisis leaders and managers, and etc., ha having to speak on their... Uh, you know, sometimes on the fly yeah. and act uh, on the fly and, you know, pivot and be agile and all those other you know, buzzwords that are out there. And playing that game actually did that and in a fun way, but it actually tested people just, just how much can you pivot? And there were some interesting comments that came out, uh, you know, that made people laugh. It's like, okay, they're pivoting. You know, like they're, they're, they're being presented with this strange picture. And I think one of them was a circle of, people on a bike or something like that? Yes. Uh, like a tandem bike, but it was all joined in a circle? A bike that no, went nowhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And some of the uh, explanations people had when that slide cropped up was like, ooh, that's really good. <laughs> like, where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah, maybe we should use PowerPoint Roulette as a way to train people to lead tabletop exercises. That would be really interesting. Because you have your plan and you have your game plan and then the participants do whatever they want regardless of what you plan. Then you've got to be able to respond accordingly. Or you make the, uh, the numbers on the roulette table a specific situation or disaster and roll that way and you're 
going through your plan, your scenario. Oh, and by the way, now such and such just happened. And that's your uh, exercise. Uh, you know, and well, you're really going to learn how things unfold because let's face it, disasters don't unfold the way you want them to, right? So, And from a dramatic entrance standpoint, uh, if you had a group of participants in a conference room and you wheeled in a roulette table, <laughs> you would definitely, have, I don't know how what that would do for a lot of people's careers, but you would definitely have their attention immediately. Uh, I would think so. Even the noise. Even if people didn't see it, they would hear the noise going, I know what that is. You know, that's a roulette table. <laughs> What's going on over there? So I think we have our uh, first set of guests showing up. Yeah, I'm going to step <clears throat> out and grab them. Okay. We're hoping uh, if, if who they are, are there our guests, then uh, we're going to be talking with representatives from Netflix which uh, we're really looking forward to. As soon as I saw that uh, Netflix had some representatives here, I immediately reached out to uh, to the uh, gentleman and said, hey, we want to talk to you. you know, I want to find out what uh, is happening at Netflix. Because let's face it, you know, so many of us uh, are focused on Netflix and use Netflix that uh, if there's a problem, well, we complain. If there's an outage for, <clears throat> excuse me, 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, 30 seconds. So... We're going to be talking to a team who keep a Netflix business continuity program going and their plans and things like that. So it'll be interesting to see. James is just getting them uh, getting them set up and talking to them about what we are going to ask them. And I'm sure if anyone, uh, well, the only person who can reach me right now is Aaron. So Aaron, if you have a question for Netflix, let me know. And no, you cannot get a uh, percentage taken off your bill if you're a Netflix subscriber. That's not what these guys do. Right? <laughs> And they heard me say that too. So there we go. <laughs> there we go. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody.